The following program is a presentation of BaseNet Internet Television. Hello and welcome to this week's Crashing Glass podcast. I'm your host, Holly Hurley, here as always with my co-host, Jill Henley. Hi, Jill. Hi, how's everyone doing tonight, Holly? Oh, we're doing great. I'm actually, I've got two special guests with me, with me here tonight, and I'll let them introduce themselves. We've got Ashley. Go ahead, Ashley. Hi, guys. It's Ashley LLB again. Um, thanks for, to Holly for bringing me back onto your show. It's my pleasure. And hi, everyone. I'm Onya Day, and it's good to be here, and I'm excited about um, our topic this evening. It's the Oscars! I'm so excited. I love me some Oscars. So, uh, <laughs> so obviously, um, we are just, we just watched the Best Director presentation, and uh, Michael, I can't pronounce this, has an obvious um, apparently got uh, the Oscar uh, for the artist as Best Director. No surprise there. I feel like the artist just came out of nowhere this year. Yeah, I agree. i I saw some previews for it, but I was, and I've never actually watched it. But apparently, it's been sweeping the awards tonight. So, go them, go the artist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Like a silent movie. Like yeah, where is that? In black and white. Yeah. You didn't. Oh yeah, oh, the one in black and white. My sister told me yeah. about it. She mm-hmm. said it was interesting, actually. See, um, interesting's so. about the best I've heard, yeah. and I just wonder, like, because I really do feel like it's probably going to win Best Picture. We may still be here when that happens. Yeah. Um, but, you know the, uh, but I just I don't know, Jill. Like, what do you think? Silent movie for like Best Picture of the Year? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to. Well, I guess maybe it will pull it out, but um, I I haven't seen it, so I feel like I I feel bad because I've seen so many of them, the ones up for Best Picture. I think almost every other one, but I haven't seen um the artist and I guess it's sort of one of those things where it's it gets kind of this um, nostalgic vote you know because it is it does go back to the beginning of movies and the beginning of Hollywood so maybe it has something to do with that yeah well, from what I've heard I think it's just intriguing the fact that you're telling a story now with something that's silent and it's so I, I think they were able to portray what they really wanted to say and uh, from what I heard from my sister I'm um, said it was a she enjoyed it so I think it's just that intriguing part about being silent and something different, something unique, um, and something from a different perspective. And I think that's why it's getting all the way. Yeah, I agree. Something different. Like you said, um, it's the only thing out there right now. So people are going to latch on to it. So it must have been a great effort. So. Well, I obviously, I mean, since we have Ashley here and she has her own fashion line, I'm dying to talk a little bit about fashion. <laughs> sure. And I, I hate to start with someone sort of unknown, but she was definitely my favorite and totally got snubbed for best supporting, uh, Melissa McCarthy. Although I think Octavia Spencer did a great job, don't get me wrong. And Melissa McCarthy has on this like pink confection it's a tent. It's just a tent. Yeah. It's a tent with jewels on it. It looks like a parachute. It's really bad. Uh, really, really bad. So I, I understand she's a plus size woman, but there are better ways you can complement your figure outside of having all this flowing material. This makes her look bigger. A little you know? less ruffle would have helped her a little bit. Yeah, just a little less ruffle. I think so, and I also take issue with that color. Like, any stylist, you don't put that color. Like, like for me, when I'm trying on stuff in the dressing room, if I put on that color, even my husband would be like, don't do that. That just matches your skin. That just yeah. looks ridiculous. Yeah. And, like, I, I just think they did her such a disservice because she is a beautiful woman. She may be a plus-size woman. She's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, mm-hmm. that was her husband who played the, uh, the, the air marshal in right. the movie. And, you know, I mean, he loves her. She's gorgeous. And I just don't understand why they had to, like, wash her out, why they couldn't come up with something better. I think it just shows a lack of creativity on the part of her stylist. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, I think that, you know, black is so – I know black is so – classic and overdone um but in this case uh, something dark and it probably would have really suited her well rather than take a take a chance like that i don't know i just wanted to ask ashley before we get further into the fashion red car- carpet um gossip um ashley remind us uh, again what you're, you're about your clothing line a little details about it and then about the website and stuff that you're building for it just so that um the listeners will know 
Yeah, sure, definitely. So I am working on a clothing line for tall women. Um, it's called Alyssa Vermel Apparel, and I'm currently in the process of building out the designs, building the website. So the goal is by the end of the year to be able to have items available online at, at AlyssaVermel.com. So yeah, so it's going well so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it leads me. So thank you for asking. Yeah, no, great. I love to hear. I love to hear women doing new and different things. <laughs> and I also love that we have Onya Day here this week because she's such a like contrast. She's totally a <laughs> finance person. She's my running partner in the mornings and totally like probably one of the most hardcore people that I've ever met. So she's giving us a more practical viewpoint today. Exactly. She can be a balance for our wild artistic marketing brain. <laughs> and maybe how to look Oscar worthy on a good budget. <laughs> yes. Maybe. That's, yeah. I think that is perfect. I agree. Yes. That so, is perfect. <laughs> we just we just saw online a lot of people are talking about Meryl Streep's Oscar dress because she just uh, she's presenting uh, for the Governor's Award and uh, and I'm loving that she's like one of the jokes that I saw online was you know if I look like an Oscar maybe I'll get an Oscar yeah and, uh, and she's wrapped and she's been doing this like wrap dress a long sleeve thing mm -hmm. for like every award show we've seen her on this season and I just I want to like shake her and be like, Meryl, you're a beautiful woman, like, not just for 50, but, like, yeah. for any age, like, right. I, I think this is probably the best she's done this award season, like, it's a beautiful dress, it's definitely gold, right, but, I don't know. I still think she, I mean, she has a great body, and I, maybe it's because she's older, so she's more conscious, and she doesn't want to have the tight dresses or the nipples showing or whatnot, which is fine, I totally respect that, you know, but... <laughs> You know, she came out with her glasses on as well. Like, well, it's the Oscars. You know, you can jazz it up a little bit. You don't have to be so simple. I feel like she keeps going these simple, like I said, wrap dresses with like a, a large V-neck, um, just wrapped around her whole body. And I don't know. I think I think she could afford to be a little bit, have a little more style to her. But again, she is older, you know, in her 50s, so maybe she's being more conscious of her body, um, so there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, just last um, year. I think Meryl Streep is in her 60s, actually, oh, possibly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, no, so here she is, she's um, 62. Oh, wow. Um, so it, it just, I'm looking at this, uh, uh, yeah, I just brought up a photo of her, and you're right, it, I think that um, I like the colors kind of cool, you know, it kind of interesting, but the, it's so, it's not a nice tailored, not a tailored look. I, she's so beautiful. Her face, she's 62 years old and she just is glowing. She's just a really effervescent type of look of a woman, I think. And she's just a classic beauty. And yeah, I don't believe in going up with the glasses on and stuff. I agree with Ashley on that. Although I'm looking at the pictures of her on the red carpet and despite the dress being way too loose fitting, she she looks beautiful. Yeah, she's definitely, definitely still beautiful regardless. But, you know, there are some ways she could enhance it, just a tad, so. Yeah, I think so. And, you know, actually, to move through the gold sector here, Jessica Chastain actually on Twitter was uh, trending as, like, best dress. And I don't know if I, I don't know if I can get on board with that. I mean, she looks fantastic. And you know what I like about it is I have been complaining this entire, this entire award season that everybody's just been too safe. And at least she's got something going on. You know what I mean? Like, at least there's some embroidery there. There's a nice shape. Although I feel like it was almost a bit much. You know, the gold embroidery yeah. on the black velvet, it just looks heavy. It looks like a lot of dress. For one person and I, I don't know maybe that's just me but I just I don't know I thought it was very it was almost like a little too much going on yeah I agree I like the shape I like the concept of having the you know two different patterns being you know separated by the bit of black but I agree I think I would have liked it better if the top matched the bottom because I feel like what's happening at the bottom was kind of like a flower or and it just isn't, it seems like it's two different dresses together. And I just don't think it's a cohesive look. But I said she still looks beautiful, but, you know. Yeah, I'm not sure about the material. As you said, it definitely makes her, it look heavy. She doesn't look as comfortable, but she looks good. The color star, I don't know if that gold is for her. 
with the black. Yeah, she could have um, pulled off a lot of cool colors, like green, like, were you about to say that, Holly, green or something? Oh, no, that was, that was Ashley, actually. Oh, yeah. sorry, Ashley. Yeah, I can see her. She's got such pretty, pretty um, tones, you know, with the red, and but she, that, that's definitely not um, her best color by a long shot. Yeah, no, I think so. I think she could have done better, but I got to say, I, I liked her in The Help. I thought she did a fantastic job with her character. She was yeah. a really, like, effervescent, like, mm -hmm. blonde, you know, really, really, yeah. that uh, Minnie mm -hmm. worked for. And I just, I thought she did a great job. And comparatively, I also saw The Debt, and comparatively, I think this movie showed such a range of personality on her. Oh, and she I really liked The Debt, too, a lot of the okay. Yeah, totally different roles, right? Yeah. It took me a while to recognize her. Yeah, now you say it, like, you're right, that that was her. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Totally, yeah. totally different. Wow, okay. Now, we're definitely going to have a, good, a, <laughs> a movie version later tonight of Good, Bad, and Different, so pick a movie you want to talk okay. about, because that's coming. Um, <laughs> speaking of Good, Bad, and Different, oh, my God. Chris Rock wore a Jersey Shore blowout in his hair. Yeah. Like, I mean, huge freaking, he blew it, like, straight up. And like, I mean, Chris. Yeah. Like, I know you're getting old, but honey. Yeah, like, there's he no must be. Tr either he just doesn't care anymore, or he's trying to grow dreads. That's one thing I could think of why he would come out looking like that. So I'm hoping he's trying to grow like Mercutio dreads <laughs> <laughs> from uh, from uh, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Right. I can't remember that actor's name, but he's amazing. He was on Lost also, and but like, I feel like he's like trying to become that guy. Like maybe he's just getting tired of doing comedy. Yeah, exactly. I don't know what his goal is, but I hope that's part of it because I agree. There's no there's no reason to show up looking like that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't like that. Oh, Sandra Bullock. What do we think about Sandra? A little bit loose in the top, tight, like she's got like this sort of low-waisted. I'm wondering if maybe, and I know this is unfair to say because actresses are so skinny anyway, it's probably like the difference between being 100 pounds and 105 pounds. Right. But I'm wondering maybe she put on some weight and she's not comfortable with her right. body or something because this dress looks like she's trying to hide. That was exactly what I asked. Yeah. I thought she was pregnant for a second, and I was wondering why it was so loose at the top. It doesn't have any shape on her body. Um, it's a nice material, and it looks, the colors are great, but the shape, is it just doesn't hug her well. It doesn't accentuate her figure. That was my thought. Yeah, I agree. It's I like the bottom part, but that top is just so loose, and it doesn't do anything for her. Like I agree. It's, what is she trying to hide? It just doesn't make any sense. So... Uh, yeah, try again. I also, I gotta <laughs> say, and I don't know how you feel about this, like, from a fashionable perspective, but I do feel like, you know, she definitely had, has been doing, uh, I feel like from every award show, probably the last, like, year or so, she's been doing a little Botox. And yeah. it looks like her bottom lip is moving, the top lip's not moving. And I, I just feel like there's a certain beauty in icons that don't try so hard. Yeah. Like, to stay the same age. And I always thought Sandra would be one of those women who would just grow old gracefully. Like, I don't know why. I just thought she's so quirky and she's so applicable as an actress. I feel like she could play her age. There's no reason for her to try to look younger. And she played her, that role, just that role that she won for last year, Best Actress. Uh, yeah. 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 Say the name of that movie again. Blind Side. Blind Side. Thank you. I when I saw her, I hadn't seen it before she won, and then when I saw it, I was like, "Wow, now I understand." <laughs> um, and I just think she so she is playing roles of people of you know women when she's what forty five or so. And I, you're right, I agree about the Botox. I actually don't. I think the dress looks okay, and I think that if she's trying to hide weight, this is certainly not the dress because it's only loose like in the very top. So that's not where women usually gain. I mean, you gain weight down down below down so she's it's very tight there it's almost like the mermaid look at the bottom um so i actually think her body looks fat, fantastic but the the over botox thing it yeah it's it's not a becoming at all and i feel like i don't know these women in hollywood must just they must not be able to stop i'm curious to know where they get the uh, you know but how who they go to, to that recommends having so much botox because it, it makes them look worse rather than better I wonder if it has to do with her divorce and just coming out with a more confident look or... I wonder. Um, I don't know. But, I mean, she's always been that lovable person. Um, yeah, I think it's probably a mix of things, you know. So as you get older, there's more pressure 
you know, in Hollywood to be younger, to be that Jennifer Aniston who's 45 but still looks mid 30s, yeah. has an incredible body, you know, and so that's that's her competition. So if she's starting to get wrinkles or if she's starting to gain weight or whatnot, you know, unfortunately everyone has a weak point, and she could very well just feel like that's the only way she can compete is if she gets these. Botox or plastic surgery or whatnot because it's a harsh world out there, you know, and if it's not Sandra, it's going to be someone else. And so she's probably just trying to make sure she gets the roles that she really wants. And if that means staying younger, then that means staying younger for her until she gets to that point where it's, you can't go any further. You know, and I, don't, I think she's kind of that middle ground where she's not, you know, Meryl Streep old, where it's visibly that she's older but she's also not that young and chipper starlet either. And so she's kind of that middle ground of try to play the younger roles or the older roles. She's probably just trying to hedge her bet and make sure she can get as much work as possible. So. No, she is. And I, I definitely think that's a problem in Hollywood. And I definitely think that, like, one of the reasons why I stopped acting in my 20s was I sort of realized, like, I'm never going to be the skinniest girl up for this role. I'm ne No matter how pretty I think I am, I'm never yeah. going to be the prettiest girl up for this role. I'm never going to be, you know, the, the whitest teeth, the best voice. Like, it really doesn't matter what you've got going for you. It's really never enough in Hollywood. And I actually, we're looking at Jane Seymour right now and talking about somebody who's just grown, you know, not old, but older beautifully. Right. I mean, granted, she looks a little thin, but, I mean, all actresses look a little thin. Right. But, you know, she's in this, like, fabulous red dress. It's a bit much. It's got a lot of sequins. Like, right. But, you know, all in all, I think it was at least an Oscar dress. Like, I feel like a lot of people wore really safe dresses this year. They wore, or they wore fabrics that looked like they could be, like, Sunday morning dresses. They could yeah. them into longer dresses. And at least she came looking like she was going to the Oscars. I mean, right. they're red. it's red. There are sequins. There's no doubt she right. came to, like... It's Got a provocative design, you know. So I don't, I don't mind what Jane Seymour has, what she's wearing. No, I think it looks pretty good. I like, I like the red dress. And I just mentioned her; she wasn't up for anything or anything this year, but she looked great. And of course, you know, every time you have an Oscar, you got to talk about Angelina and Brad, right? <laughs> I wanted to bring, I wanted to bring up Angelina because I saw um, her just give the. Um, was it, I guess she gave out Woody Allen's Oscar Best Director. No, Best Director was the artist. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can find her back here. I can't remember. Yeah. Well, Angelina looked... I'll, I'll plug in. Angelina looked amazing. I thought she looked really good. And I don't always, you know, I, I'm not necessarily her biggest fan. <laughs> but I thought she looked really nice. Her makeup was done so nice. And I like the dress. What did you guys think? I think that slit is... I know that Angelina Jolie is like the sex, sexiest woman in Hollywood. But I think that slit, slit is not age appropriate. <laughs> I was a little bit like, ooh, I think I saw Angelina's business. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I was a little traumatized by that dress, quite frankly. Mm, so the slit's too high for you, Holly. <laughs> it's a little too high for me. And I love her. I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh, she did best original screenplay for uh, Midnight oh. Care. For Woody Allen. Okay. Um, Ashley, what do you think about slits for women who are, you know, older than, I don't well, Angelina is, what, 34 or something? She's what, not what, old, but that was just, I mean, walking across the stage, I was like, holy smacks, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, if you have the body, I think feel free to show it off. But I do think that slit is dangerously high. I will say that. If it was a couple inches shorter, I wouldn't care as much. But, you know, this is how it was, Angelina Jolie, so I, I wouldn't expect Angelina to be safe. Um, but just in general, I feel that there isn't an age where you have to stop wearing high slits. I just think that, you know, like you said, I don't, if it's at the point where we could see your business, then I think that's a little bit too much regardless of your age. You know, <laughs> so I, I think Angelina's teetering on that point right there. It's literally like a half an inch more and it would be a peep show you know and that's the one thing I don't like about it but I think she looks good I think she's a little pale I do think that but you know she you know but it's just her like she's kind of always been that way so maybe she's not a big tanner and that's okay that's cool but other than that I think she looks great um you know I also gotta say like this dress has a stance right 
you know, it's like she does the one leg hip out with this dress because of the shape of it. Like, she really, like, had a stance to go with it. Right. And I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I think it's, I think it shows that she appreciates the art of the couture. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's, like, at a certain point, like, the whole point of a couture, especially on a night like the Oscars where you're going to be wearing it for, like, six solid hours. Right. It's important that it's wearable and that it doesn't require that much maintenance. But then right. I mean, she has a whole team to help her. So I'm, right. But I just think as far as, like, wearable for the normal girl, this would be there if it weren't for those one or two factors. Like, it's maybe an inch less of a slit and maybe a little less of a cock to one side, you know? Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely the couture look. And that's fine, but yeah, this I definitely this is not like ready to wear. You couldn't walk out the house looking like this, you know. Um, the slip needs to come down just a bit, and but other than that, I think I think it looks great. I think she looks good. So I like the asymmetry of the top, the asymmetry of her hip. You know, the different um, amounts of fabric on either side. So I think I think that's a good part about it. So. Well, while we're at it, I actually, uh, it's, it's been hard to find a, a photo of this, but Christopher Plummer, Christopher Plummer showed up tonight. He's 84 years old, and he wore a velvet tuxedo. Yeah. <laughs> <Except> <laughs> Oscar for beginners. Yeah. Fancy. <laughs> he was very fancy. But I sort of feel like he's 84. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Right. Like, I think yeah. if, uh, I think I'd be complaining if Clooney had worn a velvet tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> But I sort of thought it was fantastic that Christopher Plummer met it. I don't know why. I sort of thought it was like a am 84, right, like kind of thumbing his nose. Yeah, you, know? you can do what you want, 84. When you get to be like past 80, you can do whatever the heck you want to do. He's you earned know. it. <laughs> yeah, he's earned a velvet tuxedo. Absolutely. <laughs> it was um, Christopher Plummer was in The Sound of Music. Is that right? Do I have the right? Is that oh, him? Yeah. Really right about that, actually. Yeah. So he goes. I mean, so I always have a soft spot spot because I love the sound of music. <laughs> um, I have a dress to ask you about, you girls, about, and that is Emma Stone, the red, the pretty red, but with the big bow at the top. What is your take on that dress? I'm gonna let Ashley go first. <laughs> I like it. I actually like the big bow. I really do. I like the um, those Grecian style dress. You know, I I like everything about it. She's got her hair swept to the other side, which is appropriate, you know, with this big bow on her right. Um, I do think the dress is very long. Emma Stone has a tendency to, I don't know, I guess she doesn't, you don't get these dresses tailored, I'm assuming, that you just take it as it is. Well, I don't know, because Tina Fey was designed for her by Carolina Herrera. It was a custom Carolina well, Herrera. Well, so not everybody has a custom-made dress, so yeah. this could very well have been a dress off of a rack that a stylist brought in and you're not gonna you're not gonna tailor it because unless you're on a buyer you're not gonna tailor it. But so that's the only thing I don't like about it is she's swimming in the dress at the bottom, but I like it. I think it fits her very well. I think she's beautiful in it. You know, and I don't have a problem. I, I like the big bow. Like I would wear it. Like I like statement pieces like that. And I think she she wears it very well. I agree. I, I like the big bow. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's also a good color for her right now. Um, and she looks great. She's always looked great, great. I don't think I've ever seen her in a bad dress, at least not in the last few years. So I, I agree as well. Good I, I have a little bit of an issue with the bow uh, because her hair's in a pretty, and of course, you know, we're looking at her straight on here, but her hair's in a pretty elaborate bun, mm -hmm. and my feeling with the bow that close to the hair is she definitely did sort of centerpiece hair, and I feel like when you do hair that well, like the bow, I think, was just too close to the hair. I think she should have done a simpler hair, maybe, like maybe just a basic chignon instead of like, she had, I mean, it was a bun, but it was like, it had some stuff going on, mm -hmm. and for that, it was a little busy for me, and my husband actually said like, whoa, red on red, that's a bit much, and I think that's sort of what guys think, like guys are like, whoa, red on red. I like red hair, I should wear red red Yeah, but I have, a, I have red hair right now, and I love to wear red, and I'm not going to stop wearing red mm -hmm. because I have red hair, so in a way, I can totally respect that, because I hate that it becomes their boating and he said at least they didn't dress her in green because they always dress yeah, her in green. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I I per, I like this. I think, you know, she she's very pale, you know, and so, but she's always been that way and I think this color complements her and her hair, yes, it's red, but it's not, it's not like her hair is the same color as the dress. You know, I it's kind of that strawberry blondish right now and I think that's fine. I think I think she looks great. I don't see the back of her hair, so I can't make the call as whether or not 
it's too busy. But, you know, she's, she did the right thing. She pulled her hair back in a bun. Now she has a cascading wave with this big bow, then definitely that would work. But I think I think it's great. I think she did a really great job. I got to, Natalie Portman is on right now presenting Best Actor. And, dude, I typically think she does terrible, but I kind of like this one, at least compared to last year. God, last year the pregnancy tent she was in was yeah. like a bit much. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know who but she was Natalie real Portman stylist is, but the last couple of award shows, I don't think she's done a great job. I don't like this polka dot. Um, she looks like she's could go to prom right now. Yeah. Um, I think she been last couple of award shows. I feel like she's worn dresses that have not you know, are not age appropriate for her. Like she's young, she's vibrant, she's sexy, but she doesn't wear young, vibrant, sexy dresses. She wears I feel like she used to. I feel like when I lived in New York, Natalie Portman was like hipster chic. Like she was always wearing something a little bit edgy, yeah. a little bit nerdy. And now she just kind of wears dresses that make her look like she's like 50. It's like she's yeah. just been like, oh, yeah. I'm not trying. It more. looks like she pulled this off of the H&M's rack. It just yeah, it's not edgy. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look they off her. Yeah. Maybe. No, it doesn't. Like a cotillion or something. I don't know. No. Yeah, Natalie Portman has been failing the last couple of times. So. Sorry, Sorry, Jill. Didn't mean to step on you. Oh, oh, no, I was agreeing that she it doesn't right. I was agreeing that it, I don't like it. <laughs> and that she could, she could, it looks like it just was pulled off a rack. And yeah, it doesn't say Oscar at all. I was trying to think of someone, well, it'll be exciting to hear who does win for Best Actor, in part because I actually just recently saw Moneyball, you know, whatever, got it, you know, watch it at home, and it was just, I, I mean, I loved it because I love sports, and I lo really liked to, I liked to learn, I liked learning about the idea of Moneyball and how it changed Major League Baseball, so I'm interested to see, I, I mean, Brad Pitt's a long shot, I'm sure, but he, he, you know, he did some good work in that movie, so, and I also like George Clooney in The Descendants, well, but, you know, oh, go it's ahead. Only, go, no, it, have they announced it yet? Well, they did. It was uh, the best act. Well, the best actor just went to uh, Jean du Duhardin, the guy from right. The Artist. Of yeah. course, you know we yeah. talked about how we love him to talk about. I've got to say, I wish that Best Picture would go to something awesome, like he talked about something huge. But I just get the feeling that it's going to go to the artist. I feel like the Academy like decided the first time they yeah. saw this picture, they were like, "Ooh, silent film that hasn't been done in ages. Let's give that Best Picture." Yeah, you know, like, I don't know. Huh. Yeah, I think you're right. And there, and that's going to be announced probably within, what, about 10 minutes or so. Oh, yeah, I think we're getting close. But on the on the way there, I really want to talk about Tina Fey's custom Carolina Herrera. Yeah. I mean, made, like, basically crafted on her body here. This navy blue dress, very age-appropriate, great with her skin, good. I don't know. I'm a she looks beautiful. Tina Fey looks drop-dead gorgeous in this dress. It fits her wonderfully a wonderful design. Um, it's kind of got a peplum, you know, for the top. And I, I think she looks great. I I have no issues with this. I think she looks wonderful. So. Sorry, guys. Hold on one second here. Sorry, my Google Chrome wasn't uh, wasn't muted. And obviously, since we're doing the coverage from Google Chrome, it caused a little bit of a problem. So, sorry. We were talking about uh, Tina Fey Tina being Fey. fabulous. In uh, in her navy blue sh uh, sh dress, and we were gonna go ahead and let uh, Ashley talk a little more about that. Oh yeah, no, I was just saying that I think this is a wonderful design. Um, it fits her wonderfully. It's it's very it's age appropriate, but very classy, very timeless. I think she looks gorgeous. I think she did an excellent job. Yeah, I, I definitely. Go ahead. It's so great to see. No, it's great to see someone like. Um, Tina Fey, you know, because she is so talented. I think she's talented in the way where, you know, she obviously is a good uh, comedic actress, but she also does, I think, so much writing, right, for and producing for 30 Rock. Um, and it's just so nice to see someone like her just glam up and just look beautiful. And, yeah, I'm looking at her right now. And, and navy blue is such a cool color because it's like, you know, it's kind of saying, hey, you know, I'm not wearing black because black is so, <laughs> so boring or, you know, that that's not right for the Oscars. But navy blue is such a nice statement. And I, I actresses have done that in the past and I always like the navy blue. 
Well, and I want to get on board with and basically say that any woman who's not read the book Bossy Pants should most definitely do so. <laughs> really? It is, it is a fantastic guide to being successful if you're a woman, but more importantly, it's hilarious. I mean, maybe it's not so useful, but it's, it's <laughs> totally hilarious. So I, I, would, I, would, I would plug that because I think it's definitely one of the best strong woman books that's been written in a while. Um, so speaking of strong women, uh, Viola Davis uh, from The Help. Looking, I, I thought pretty smashing in a green dress. Uh, Ashley and I actually conflicted on this one a little bit. I thought they gold, they put like gold all over her body, and she may be a little old for that. She also cut her hair, dyed it like platinum blonde, and uh, she's with her husband. Um, I mean, I think she, I think she looks fabulous, but uh, but I, I can see the contention here. Let's let's. Uh... Yeah, my main contention is the color. Um, I think this isn't, I don't know what color green this is, but I don't like it. It's just, I don't know, it doesn't, not that it clashes with her skin color, but it just doesn't complement her. I think there's a different shade of green that would have been better. And also there's something going on, like I can't quite see it all the way, but there's a different material on top than it is on the bottom. There's like some tool. It looks like the dress like ripped, kind of. I don't know, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. But just from afar, it looks like kind of disjointed. I don't mind so much of the gold. Her haircut was a shock, but that's fine. People do it all the time. It's just, for me, mainly, it's this green, this bright, you know, Crayola box color green. And I just don't think that it's, but I don't think that it's worthy of her wearing it on her body. She's got a great body. I would like a different color to compliment it. That's all. I think she looks really good. I think it's not the best tone for her, but she actually looks great. She looks much younger with her hair cut. I actually didn't recognize her at first, but she really looks, she looks strong. She looks good. And I guess while uh, we're on Viola Davis, we should probably take a look at Octavia Spencer. Octavia Spencer, I think, I think she, she, you know, we were talking about Melissa McCarthy's dress earlier, and I think when you have some curves, I think stylists, especially in Hollywood, where everybody's so skinny, has a difficult time dressing, you know, people who are a little curvier, and Octavia Spencer, I think, knocked it out of the park. I think she really brought her A-game. Yeah, I think Octavia Spencer looks beautiful there. You know, that is very complimentary of a, a plus-size woman. It's gathering in the right places, you know, it's got the sleeve like a lot of them tend to have. I think she looks gorgeous. I I I love it. She did a great job. Great styling. Yeah, so. I think so. I think that's a good contrast too, you know. Uh, sweet, I mean it's kind of a similar color, the sea foam the sea foam that uh that Bernice Bergeau is wearing. I I don't like the I think I would like that dress in any other color. Yeah. I just think in seafoam or mint green, or I really think it's seafoam, quite frankly. My cousin yeah. got married in seafoam, and I'm like 85% yeah. sure that it's seafoam. <laughs> it just... It's going to be nice in a black or yeah. like a peach color or something like that. Yeah. It, she looks washed out in the dress, but it's a great dress. Great. Yeah. It looks your body well. Yeah, but such a good a shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a waist. Yeah. Maybe that's all they had. Maybe I had seafoam left in the store. Very <laughs> <laughs> <Right> possible. <laughs> but who, possible. But then who was the top choice to wear that dress if not Bernice Bergeau, who's like totally the like darling of the Oscars? Right. <laughs> who took so, it right? Who got it before she did? <laughs> yeah, right? That's I don't know. Wrong. Maybe someone over in Europe picked it up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying there has to be a reason why she chose to wear that color. <laughs> I mean, Octavia yeah. Spencer does look awesome. She just really does. It's a nice, it's a nice color, a nice dress. So, how about the the girl with the dragon tattoo, the actress? Um, oh, Rooney Mara. Rooney Mara. Let's talk hey, about her. From the back, that's a fabulous dress. But the minute you turn her around and go to the front, you're like, does she have on gauze? Is she literally wearing hospital gauze? Like, if you look at the straps on that dress, they are, they are hospital gauze. And then the shape of it's kind of weird. I don't understand the reverse cones on her breasts. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't support her bosoms well. Maybe. See, I told you, we were going to get around to somebody not wearing her bra, and I'm yeah. back there. <laughs> I agree. The back is beautiful. I think she looks beautiful. I, I honestly didn't recognize her, but I don't like the cone being at the top, and I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. 
Yeah, and then, what did you think, Joe? Not, not, not was my first choice. Not was my first choice. I don't think that that's the right. I, I, my biggest problem is the color. The the dress is is dress kind of interesting, and the back is pretty. Thought the train is pretty. The 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 bust, you know, the that's you know, I don't know. It's different, but the color just doesn't. It's too. I don't know. What that's just not. It's just it. It's like that. It's not even an off white at all. It's right. It's a bright white. Bright white. Yeah. 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 I don't um, mind the bright white so much, um, but I mean it's different. No one's really wearing bright white. That's why I think I like it because it's very rare that you see someone with that bright white dress. But yeah. I just think there's too many elements that could have been changed, which makes it not the best choice for this award show. So. I would agree with that. And a lot of people think Michelle Williams, you know, speaking of young actresses, that, well, I guess Michelle Williams is practically my age now, but, you know, they, they've they been saying Michelle Williams looks great, and, like, Tim Gunn just went rounds about how fantastic he thought her dress was. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, Meryl just won for uh, for uh, the Iron Lady. Oh, so she talked about the Iron Lady last week as far as, like, movies about right. like, successful women are concerned, so... Oh, I'm, I'm excited about that, I guess. <laughs> I'm sick of seeing her win awards, but I can't hate on a, an award based on a Margaret Thatcher movie. I mean, yeah. that just kind of makes me happy. Right. Torn. <laughs> Between my desire not to see Meryl Streep win another millionth award and my desire to see this movie get some recognition. So, there you have it. But, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think of, uh, I guess, what do you guys think of uh, Michelle Williams' dress? I don't like her. I like the color. I like it. She's. I mean, she pulls off that short haircut really well. Not many could do it as well as she does. But I do. I like the dress. It's um. It's an interesting color. Uh, Ashley, what would you say? Is it? I, I mean, it, it was a I dark. No, color. I like the color. Off the, middle. the color. I feel the look of her. I think of Starburst. You know, I feel like it's so <laughs> bright and. It, I don't know. I and I don't like the ruffle peplum she's got around her waist either. I think that was just added on there for a good measure, and it wasn't a good measure. Mm-hmm. But that's just my personal opinion. I just don't think it compliments her. I think if she could have kept the bodice as it was, I think it would have been fine. So, but the color is just a little too sherberty for me. So. Yeah, I actually feel like the the dress I loved, except for that peplum, that yeah. that little that little ruffle was just I just want to rip that off of there. I feel like if I could rip it off, I'd love that dress. But uh, speaking of things I'd like to rip off and then love the dress, uh, Glenn Close, man, she's a beautiful woman. Why is she wearing seventeen layers of fabric? <laughs> she needs to lose that jacket. That jacket, that yeah, jacket is not helping at all. And it may help to know that this is Zach Posen, so. I mean, like, as far as, like, a little, you know, he likes to add a little more. Right. But, like, I just, I don't know. What do you, what, did you, did you get a look at uh, Glenn Close's dress yet, Jill? I have not. So I can't, I cannot comment on her. But I feel like, yeah, she, Holly, weren't you, you were talking about her, how much you like. Oh, because we, we talked about her role last, yeah, last time about playing a man. And just that she is a naturally beautiful, she has a, a really naturally beautiful look to her. So I'll have to, let's hear more about the dress. Oh, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's forest yeah. green. Yeah, it's a nice forest green color. The dress is beautiful. I think it's got a beautiful shape at the bust. Um, I think I, I like the train. I, I like the body of the dress. The only thing I don't like is this tuxedo-type jacket that she's got on. I mean, yes, it matches. That's wonderful. But, again, maybe it's an age-appropriate thing. Maybe it was cold outside. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I think the dress would be fine without it. You know, but again, maybe she was just trying to be different and trying to be more age appropriate. But I, I like the dress alone without the jacket. Well, and actually, I think this was kind of a fashion this year because Gwyneth did something similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this year she did like a jacket on top of her, uh, on top of her dress, and then she said, "Well, don't worry, guys, this will come off when I get inside." And uh, and she actually did a Tom Ford dress, which I love me some Tom Ford. But she, I don't know though. I just feel like uh, it's like I a cape. Say, but that is more Oscar appropriate, a cape as opposed to a tuxedo work type jacket. Yeah, it's like a blazer. She's got on a, a green blazer on top of her green dress. When it's powerful, when I'm looking at it now, is you know, like I said it's a long cape goes all the way down to the floor. 
has the exact same silhouette as her dress, you know, it clearly, it's an accompanying piece, you know, whereas the, you know, Glenn Close's, you know, jacket is just, oh, I need a jacket to put on, and then he just made a blazer, and that's how I feel. I mean, the solar blades and everything. I think it might have been like a shout out to her character because Albert Nobbs is, you know, basically a pants roll, so she's dressed as a man, and they did a fantastic job with her makeup and making her look like a man. But I just think it was a miss as a fashion choice, even if it was sort of an homage to what she did. Oops, I almost, I closed J Lo just now, and I need to open that back up because <laughs> speaking of age appropriate, Jennifer Lopez, you are too old to let people yeah. talk you into practically showing your nipple and wearing a see through dress. Right? I agree. I agree. I need to say that. Gwyneth Paltrow, I think, I mean, I'm not a loving, loving the cape, but she looks like a, a Roman statue. <laughs> yeah. She just looks gorgeous. I, I just, I love, and it's, and it's a white. It's similar to when I was just um, saying about, I didn't love the white on um, Mara, Rooney, yeah, Mara, but I like the white on Gwyneth. It looks nice. She, I feel like the dress underneath the cape is just perfect. It's so simple and she wears it so well. Cameron um, Diaz also wore white uh, or an off white, so we'll have to discuss that. But going back to J Lo, <laughs> I looked her up and I the, my first, we hadn't even you know brought her up yet, and I was like, ooh, that that does not look. She's pushing, she's pushing the envelope there, and not in a good way. No, she's just I don't know. I mean, it just makes her look older, you know, mm-hmm. and she shouldn't. It makes her look like she's trying too hard to be the most memorable thing at the Oscars. Like, and I didn't think J-Lo was even in the movie this year, you know, and she's trying too much. She's doing too much. I think she needs to just, you can be beautiful without having your boobs out, you know, without wearing a see-through dress. And I don't, I think she keeps missing that. I think she feels like she's only going to stand out if she does something radical. And I think she's going to get new stylist and teach her something different. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and I'd like to, I mean, you mentioned Cameron Diaz and the two of them next to each other. Cameron Diaz wore a perfectly age-appropriate dress, totally showed off her rockin' body. I mean, holy smacks, if I looked like that now, I would throw myself a parade. Like, (laughs) she looks fantastic. And she's wearing, like, an off-white dress, but it doesn't look like a wedding and it doesn't look like J-Lo. It just looks classy. Yeah. It does. Yeah, she looks classy. Gwyneth Paltrow looks classy. So many of them. Yeah, I agree. Um, but J Lo's is too. It's just it's too see through. <laughs> it's inappropriate. Sorry, J Lo. Well, and I definitely think. Oh, by the way, guys, the artist just won Best Motion Picture. Surprising, <laughs> oh, wow. absolutely no one. Uh, so it's over. That's it, right? It's a the, the Oscars are a wrap for 2012. It's yeah. true, they are. I mean, I was going to talk about that Penelope Cruz's dress kind of aged her, but I think I'd rather get into some good, bad, and different. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Yeah, that's Maybe fun. start wrapping it up. How do you feel about that, Jill? That sounds good. That's, yeah, I'm excited for good, bad, and indifferent. <laughs> I do, too. And I have, I have a, a great pick, but I don't want to go first because that's not kind to our guests. I think we should let one of them go first. So uh, movies from this year, good, bad, or indifferent to women. Ladies, here we go, our game show, good, bad, or indifferent. Well, I'll start with the obvious, the help, but I actually liked it. I think it was a great movie. Um, you know, of course, you know, it's special to me because it talks about time in our history where, you know, African Americans, especially women, you know, were put in these situations, you know, having to support their families and, you know, could endure this racial discrimination or whatnot. So I'm glad that someone was able to shed a light on it. I think mean, though all the women in the movie were extremely strong characters. They did an extremely awesome job, and I love that. I love seeing women being able to, you know, succeed, and especially black women. In fact, they Viola Davis and Octavia Spencer, you know, both nominated. I think Octavia actually won for best supporting role. And that's an amazing accomplishment for honestly any African American in Hollywood, you know. And so I'm just. I feel like it's great, you know, that this was an opportunity for them for this year. That was well said. I actually just saw The Help yesterday, which was interesting. I read the book first, and um, I really liked it. I mean, as Ashley said, it was a good movie. Iron Lady, I haven't seen, but I think what is intriguing about it is that it tells a story of someone who's been talked about so much, and it was good to get a glimpse of just 
her life and the challenges she faced. And I know it was at um, an older part of her life um, that the movie was shot. So I, I think the Iron Lady was definitely um, one that just portrayed a, a very strong woman. And then very few women presidents, even right now, yeah. even though we're in yeah. 2012. I think that movie just brought that reminder of what can be possible breaking that glass. And um, hopefully, in maybe not this year in the U.S., but around the world, hopefully a few women will step up to that challenge. I know there's been some in Liberia, Ireland, um, but yeah, who knows? I agree. That, that was great, and I loved how you got, were able to get in the crashing the glass. The gra that was great. Holly, do you want to go, or do you want to? Why don't we save you for last, since you've got this great pick? Okay. I thought I did. If you get it before me, I may not, but I'll still be okay. Oh no, I'm. I'm not. I won't get it before you. I don't think. And I think actually going back to what the about women being leaders of the country, of each country and about Margaret Thatcher, I did see that movie as well, and um, Aaron Lady, and I've talked about it a few times on different podcasts, and it was so fascinating, and just that she really broke the mold in the UK. I mean, it was from where she began back in the 50s and running for local office, and it was really cool, um, and she did pave the way for a lot of people uh, in, in England and, and, you know, in the UK and beyond, and I, the, the, um, the, Germany has had a female prime had a female president for a long time, you know, recent for many years. So there's another country that's added to it. So, all right, jumping back to movies, <laughs> I like many of the movies this year. I saw, you know, almost all of them that were up for best picture. I, what I what I want to say, my my, the thing I want to talk about for just a minute is The Descendants again, and it's because I saw The Descendants and I just I loved that it was, it, you know, like, I mean, versus the Iron Lady or War Horse or even Moneyball or, you know, like that, they were, those were more about events or about, you know, this one point of, of, a, of a life that was kind of more epic. But, but The Descendants was about just the everyday and just the, the minutia and the, and almost like I want to say the mediocrity sometimes of the day-to-day -day existence, you know, and I just thought that it was really fascinating to just, it, I felt that the, the movie, the director did a nice job of letting us in the theater, I saw it in the theater, you know, peer into this life of this family who was going through a very hard time, but also just dealing with day-to-day, -day, you know, crap that we all have to deal with. And so that's my, just my quick my quick plug about The Descendants, I just thought it was really neat because it did um, it let you glimpse into something that it's almost like you felt like you shouldn't see. So I thought that was an interesting twist on the movie. Cool. Yeah, that was that was an interesting twist. Um, I, I, I'm going to go with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh! Uh, I loved that book series. I loved the Swedish version. And I got to say... I mean, I think what I think is great about that book, as far as being great for women, it was written from a male perspective, which I can take or leave, but I think what's good about it is this girl is a protagonist who is flawed, and you can follow her, and she has the good and the bad and the ugly, and she's badass, but she, she's a survivor, but she also has, like, confusion, but not in a terribly girly way. Right. I, I thought she was a fantastic protagonist. And as far as for women, I think it's good. I don't know. What do you guys think about, about Girls Dragon Tattoo? Well, I never read the book. I did see the movie. And it was good. But I will say it was intense. Like, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And so, I walked out like, oh my gosh. She's like, shocked. Like, this is really happening. But I will say, I think she did an excellent job portraying her role. I agree. She did have that perfect mix of you know, I don't give a crap what the world thinks about me, but then I'm so vulnerable inside, you know, versus, you know, I'm being taken advantage of by this man, you know, and I'm going to go kill this person next. You know, so she, this crazy mix of emotions that I honestly wasn't expecting, and that's why I think she did such a great job, um, but it was definitely um, good to be able to show that women can be strong, women can be flawed, women can you know, be protectors, women can be providers, you know, um, and that, you know, there's a slew of different personalities out there. I think she did a great job of encompassing them all in the movie. Yeah, I think it, it, it just portrayed the re reality, um, and I think that's what made it intense, but that's the reality. 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's not simple. It's no. a complex way of being. I agree completely. And I think that was a beautiful, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, are you guys cool with moving on to some chick news? Sure. We're cool. You are very cool, Jill. Uh, <laughs> We're cool. <laughs> I guess moving on to some chick news, I have something not terribly great actually this week for chick news. Uh, Marie Colvin, who is best known for being the Sunday Times reporter with an eye patch, died in Syria uh, this week. Oh, wow. Um, she was in a building that actually got blown up. Uh, oh, wow. She was with her photographer, um, an up and coming French photojournalist. I'm going to get his name for you guys in just a second here. And and I, I just think that as far as, like, strong women go, Marie Coleman was, like, the girl with the dragon tattoo, only she was the girl with the crazy, crazy awesome eye patch. And, uh, and she was very, very famous among other war correspondents because she just, she just went to the front lines and she was never afraid. That's how she got the, she ended up with the eye patch, actually. It and was in, shrapnel, right? It was a yep. shrapnel injury, yeah. Shrapnel on the front lines. And she worked for the London Sunday Times primarily, and her last, interview was with Anderson Cooper on CNN and she was describing how she watched a baby die that was hit by shrapnel actually oh. and uh, how it hit him in the left side of his chest and the doctor just said there's nothing I can do and she said she watched its belly rise and fall until it died oh. and she was a champion uh, she was a champion basically for women and children and all of the uninvolved, uh, you know, victims of war. And she basically said that she would do this until until this isn't happening every day anymore. And so, you know, I pray that in her death that more journalists will go to the front lines and will try to, you know, basically end the sort of things that she reported on. What an amazing woman to, to be so passionate about your career and, and, and just also the, the kind of career that when you are, I think, in, in media and in news, you really want to do right for the people they know that are watching you. And to, she she had the shrapnel injury to her eye, and then she just went right back out there and 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 got right on the you know right in the midst of it and i'm always so impressed by people who who put that risk aside you know for the for what they see as the reward that's more important yeah she was you know she was 56 years old joe and she was from long island and uh, her mother said that when the reporters came to her house she said you know i'm dealing with this and it's difficult for me but i know that marie would have wanted me to talk I know uh, she would have wanted me yeah. to let you guys in and talk to you about this. And so, you know, I think I think there's no better way to, you know, basically invigorate. I know we've been having a lot of fun talking about Oscar fashion and silly things right. tonight. But, you know, get out there, do the hard jobs because, you know, you're the ones that are going to change the world. So I guess that's it for us this week on the Crashing Glass podcast. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you for having us. We had some light stuff, some light fashion and ridiculous dresses, and we had some good solid strong women margaret thatcher and as well as marie colvin so i think that was a great one thank you everyone yeah definitely so thank you to ashley and ashley one more plug for the Alyssa Vermel <laughs> clothing line yeah definitely so look out for the end of this year um a tall women's clothing line mostly business casual and uh, business formal apparel called Alyssa Vermel apparel um coming to you soon be on the lookout thank you well, and Onya Day is a finance professional, and uh, and she most recently worked for Coca Cola Company, and uh, she is looking, I think, still for a job. Yes, uh, here here in the states, and she is an MBA, very very qualified. Please look her up online, call her, give her a job, <laughs> uh, because she's very talented and has been freelancing. So. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Hire yeah, those girls. That's right. So if you're if you're a strong woman looking for a strong woman finance professional, you cannot do better than Onya Day, and I have seen her resume. I can promise she can back that. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Alright, well good night Jill. Good night. Thanks everybody. Hi Jill.